How's it going, everybody? My name is Prestige, and I'm here to tell you a little bit more about the game No Man's Sky and give you an update as to what I plan to do in that game. Because originally the game has one goal, and that's to reach the center of the universe. And unfortunately, that's been estimated to have to take up to five billion years for any one person to make it to the center of the universe in the game. It's just that massive, which is insane. Um, so I figure... The, well, one, there's absolutely no way that I'll be able to do that in my lifetime. It might take, uh, I don't know, 50 or 60 generations after me before that even happens. And who knows if the game's going to be around that long. So what I've decided to do is to create my own goal and go from there. And I've thought about it, thought about it quite a bit. You know, because if you're going to have your own goal in a game like this, it has to be something that you want to do. And I came across the idea, well, maybe I should find a planet. And I got to thinking on that. And I decided to settle on a the home planet of a character that is in my absolute favorite TV show called Doctor Who. And the home planet is called Gallifrey. Now, this is the home planet of the Doctor, who is the main character of the show. He is, at this point in the show, a 2,000-plus-year-old Time Lord who travels backwards in time, forwards in time, saving people, planets, systems, anything, you name it. Um, really awesome character, and especially in... <laughs> he, he makes some really good points, especially since this, with the Season 9 that was released last year. Uh, anyway, so in order to find Gallifrey, I've got to know what it is, you know, what its characteristics are, or the properties, the geographical properties. And I've got those for you guys here, and I'm going to list them off. I've got both official properties and unofficial properties of Gallifrey. Um, the official ones are based off of the actual show, endorsed by or sponsored by BBC, who is the creator and the channel on which the, the show airs. Um, as well as the unofficial sources, which come from fan fiction and novels. So the first of the officials, I'm going to go through the officials first before I hit the unofficial uh, properties. So the first one is that the planet will be yellow and or orange in color, kind of a blend in between the two. That'll be easy enough because for those of you that have seen other videos of No Man's Sky, there are a lot of planets with that type of color. So that aspect is going to be pretty easy to find. The second aspect is that it's going to be close to space central space lanes. In fact, according to the official Wikipedia, it was so close to those space lanes that uh, traders, passerby, would actually have to get clearance from Gallifrey Space Control in order to go through that part of the trade routes and space lanes. Um, so my, my thinking on this is that uh, with inside No Man's Sky, you have the space stations to every system. And you can see the trade routes for those space uh, stations. So I figure I'll find a planet that is close, that is generally quite close to the space station itself, almost to where the space station would be in orbit around this planet. I figured that would be the best way to match that description. Uh, next up is that Gallifrey has red grass. That'll be easy enough. I've probably come across half a dozen planets that have had red grass so that'll be easy enough to come across um, hopefully I'll be able to find it in these parameters the next up is that it has rocks that are all four different colors red brown purple and gold now the red and brown will be pretty easy gold I can probably safely assume that that will be the gold rocks in game uh, purple might be the hardest one so if anything, I may have to tweak that to match the Heridium Towers uh, or beams or uh, obelisks that are scattered throughout various uh, planets. So I might, uh, granted, Heridium is blue in the game, but if I can't find actual purple rocks between now and the time I find this Gallifrey, I may have to use that as a substitute. Uh, next up is snow-capped mountains, which again will be a little difficult because 
Each planet has been designed by Hello Games to have generally just one biome or one uh, geographical environment. You know, one planet's going to be strictly forest, one planet's going to be strictly cold or toxic or barren or something like that. So I don't know if I'm going to find snow-capped mountains. I hope I do, but I don't know. <clears throat> now this next one I know is going to be completely impossible to find because as far as I know, Hello Games has not added any type of uh, design into the game to where a solar system could have two suns. Uh, but that is officially how Gallifrey is. This is a planet that has two suns, one that comes up from this, that rises from the south. Uh, it didn't say where the other sun rises from. But anyway, uh, I, I, I'm not going to pay too much attention to whether it rises from the south because in the game you don't necessarily have a compass that points to north, south, east, or west. So I'm not really going to be too focused on that. And besides, I highly doubt that there's going to be any system in the entire game that's going to have two suns. So I hope, I mean, if I come across it, sweet. Anyway, the next one is going to be trees with silver leaves. Now that I've got to figure would be possible because everything is procedurally generated. So I can only assume that theoretically a tree with silver leaves exists in this game. So who knows? Maybe I'll find that. Uh, the next up, there's not a lot of detail. They just said that there were birds on the planet. They didn't really go into detail as to what type of birds they are, what they look like, or anything. Uh, it's very brief mentioning. I think out of all the episodes of Doctor Who, there's been maybe just the one reference. I don't know. Anyway, uh, the last official property is that Gallifrey is located in the constellation of Casterberus. Um... I probably won't be able to find that particular constellation because I don't think there's been any viewing of that as far as I know. Um, but at any rate, if I if I locate Gallifrey, then I'll likely end up giving it the name, uh, give the name of the solar system that it's located in, that name of Casterberus. All right, so those are all of the official properties of Gallifrey based off of BBC's releasings. Now, the next ones I have are based off of fan fictions and novels. Uh, the first off is that Gallifrey has at least two moons, one of them copper-colored, and is, that same one is called Pazithi Gallifreya. So if I find this planet and it does have two moons, one of them being copper in color, I'll give it that name. Next up is that it shares the same system as the planet Karn, which I'll go into more detail on later as well as a giant, frozen, gaseous planet called Polar Frey. Um, it's pretty easy to find a planet that's really cold or really hot. So in this area, I'm going to make that term gaseous out to mean, I'm going to interpret that as toxic. And there are quite a few toxic planets in the game as well. So if I can find one in that system that is both, fro that is both very cold as well as toxic, and I think I can safely name that one Polar Frey. Uh, last up is that we've, it has rodent-like mammals known as Taffel Shrews. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to find those or not. I hope I do, because if I do, I know what I'm naming them. Uh, next up, I've got the properties of Karn. Now, not much is known about Karn. Um, we all know it. it so it's the home to the Sisterhood of Karn, a very long-living telekinetic race that is an offshoot of the Gallifreyan population. In, in the past, Karn was known as a colony world to Gallifrey until a particular um, overlord or crime lord took over it and caused a lot of ruckus there. And at the end of that, all that struggle Karn became a completely different planet, in fact, making it burned out and exhausted as the first official property, as well as barren, leaving nothing but many ruins and abandoned plantations, as well as a lot of crashed ships from other worlds. Now, those are going to be easy to come across because um, uh, No Man's Sky actually quite literally scatters ruins and uh, abandoned buildings all across the planet. So that'll be easy to come across. And the reason why 
there are a lot of crashed ships is because the sisterhood of Karn would use their telekinetic powers or telepathic powers, whichever one it was that they had, to bring these ships down because they feared that it that the ships were carrying people who were searching for the elixir of life, which apparently is located on the planet of Karn. So who knows? Who knows? Um, the last thing is that it has similar atmospherics to Gallifrey, so it's also going to be a yellowish-orange color. We've seen a few shots of it in the Doctor Who shows, um, mainly in Season 9, Episode 1, where Colony Sarf was looking for the Doctor, and he bumped into the Sisterhood of Karn there. And uh, it really kind of shows the type of power that the Sisterhood has, and it, it makes them a rather intimidating uh race of aliens in fact actually the sisterhood of karn has more involvement towards the end of that season where even the time lord council the gallifreyan council is taking advice from them although they don't like it they take it because they know that the sisterhood is right uh, but anyway these are the characteristics of the planet uh gallifrey as well as the two other planets in the system and what this system could possibly look like um but yeah this is going to be my goal i'm going to look for this system and those planets i'm going to keep a particular focus on gallifrey itself uh anyway i should have another video out i won't be doing much this weekend or throughout the next week because i'm moving into student housing to start college so that's going to be a very busy week for me uh but hopefully the week after that, if not that next weekend, this upcoming weekend, or next weekend, I, I should say, because uh, I've got this one out on Friday, um, August 19th. Anyway, once I've got this one out, I'll be able... I probably won't have much for the next week, if not until the week after, uh, just because of me starting school up at a college. So, uh, well, again. Anyway... Uh, I hope to see you guys soon, and thanks for watching.